Energy runs power plants all across South Carolina, but how might their coal ash ponds affect local rivers? And with only seven days until Windows XP loses support, what do you need to know if you still run the operating system? And the Masters are coming to USC, but it's not golf balls you have to look out for on your walk across campus. We'll tell you what to do if you come across a rogue frisbee. All this and more next on Carolina News. Live from the capital city, Carolina News brings you your news first. With breaking news and in-depth reporting. Up to the minute weather. And all your sports news and highlights. It's all here now on Carolina News. Hello and welcome to Carolina News. I'm Ashton Frager. Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us. I'm Kara Stokes. Duke Energy has been under pressure to remove coal ash from several power plants in South Carolina after a spill occurred at a similar plant in North Carolina earlier this week. Many in the state are afraid history could repeat itself at a plant in Anderson County. Aaron Torbett has more. They were considered state of the art back in those days. Drive through the back roads of Anderson County and eventually you'll find one of Duke Energy's oldest power plants built in the 1950s. But what you can't see from the road two man-made ponds used to collect coal ash waste. These ponds are connected to the Saluda River. The Lee Steam Station is a facility that supplies electricity to the area by burning coal. That coal is then deposited into the ponds. On February 2, 2014, one of Duke Energy's power plants in North Carolina had a massive coal ash spill that resulted in over 70 miles worth of water contamination in the Dan River. This spill has environmental activists and people in the Anderson County community wondering if the Saluda River is safe from the ponds behind the Lee Steam Station. Attorney Frank Holloman with the Southern Environmental Law Center says the ponds are not safe. If that dam ever breaks, they set up a system now that will just carry the coal ash directly into the Saluda River. Brooke Diaz lives just minutes from the plant and relies on the Saluda River for her drinking water. That's kind of alarming, actually, because especially here at our at our house, so we we drink water. We don't we don't drink sodas. We don't we drink water, milk, and a little bit of juice. So, <laughs> like, we depend a lot on that. Holloman has been urging Duke Energy to create a safer environment for people in the community remove that ash from unlined pits and move it to safe dry storage away from the river in line landfills. Representatives from Duke Energy spoke in Columbia at a Public Service Commission meeting to explain the safety of their facilities. However, they say time and resources have prevented them from cleaning up coal ash. It is a task that's going to take time no matter what we do with it, um, but we're working on it every minute of every day. Meanwhile, people in the community, like Diaz, hope for more. I would suggest that, that they definitely take the advice and, and move forward. Until Duke does remove the coal ash, people in Anderson County can only hope their drinking water stays safe. Aaron Torbett, Carolina News. Duke Energy has agreed to clean up three coal ash facility, facilities in North Carolina, but they have yet to set a date to clean up the ones in South Carolina. Our weather specialist Lauren Laubach is outside by the pool. Lauren, how's the weather looking out there? It's a beautiful and sunny day outside. Temperatures in the low 80s. It's a perfect day to lay by the pool. For the rest of this week, we'll continue to see those temperatures in the low 80s with sunny skies. Until Friday, there is a chance of rain, but that should be clearing out for the weekend. Saturday should be looking lovely as well with sunny skies and warm temperatures. There will be some clouds coming in on Sunday, but we'll continue to see those warm temperatures throughout the rest of the week. I'll have the rest of your forecasts coming up later in the newscast. General Motors CEO Mary Barra goes before Congress today to answer for her company's recall of millions of cars for an ignition switch problem. The issue has been linked to 13 deaths. General Motors says Barr met last night with some of the families of the people killed in crashes linked to the recall. In remarks released in advance of her testimony, 
Testimony Barr apologized again for the problem and the delay in the fixing. Obamacare enrollment is now on track to hit the White House's original target of 7 million people. This is after a surge in signups on the enrollment deadline day. A senior administration official says healthcare.gov saw almost 5 million visits and 2 million calls were made to the call center Monday. Optimism is rising the, that the goal will be met, but the administration is still waiting for final numbers. Five Point Safety is again a concern after another shooting this weekend. Some bar and restaurant owners are no longer allowing concealed weapons inside their bar. They're posting signs forbidding the concealed weapons from being brought in, but over 10 establishments in Five Points still have no sign posted. Five Points patron Cedric Boyce says that as long as guns are allowed in Five Points, he won't feel safe. But guns are for responsible people. And when people start drinking, they lose a lot of that responsibility edge. And so therefore, I think that, that carrying concealed weapons or weapons of any kind in buys is a bad idea. The posted signs mean that if anyone does bring concealed weapons inside, they can be prosecuted for violating the law. Time is ticking down until April 8th when Microsoft will end technical support and security updates for their Windows XP operating system. XP computers will continue to function, but experts say they will be at risk to hackers and viruses infecting them. Lauren Laubach tells us what that means for those still using Windows XP after April 8th. At the University of South Carolina, you won't find many computers on campus still running Windows XP, but there is this one used by students involved with student government television. We just had dollars that we had to put in other areas as such, and that machine had been operating properly and we had not had any problems with it, so uh, that's why it hadn't been changed out yet. SGTV chief engineer John George says he's not too concerned about security threats to the computer because students use it strictly for creating schedules, not surfing the internet. With no connection to the outside world, you have a lot more protection. It's like they're not going to run out and go to uh, internet websites and those kind of things on that computer. And that's where a lot of your viruses and your problems come in. Aside from this computer, most of SGTV's computers are Macs. But one technology expert says running the outdated XP system just isn't a good idea, no matter how secure you feel you are. Even though you're behind a firewall here on campus, I would not take that as being a very secure, as being the most secure situation you can be in. Jill Chapel Fail is a senior information resources consultant at USC. She says antivirus software will only go so far in protecting XP computers. The virus protection will only uh, write for current viruses. It still doesn't address the shortcomings in the operating system. Chapel Fail says those who don't upgrade to a newer system after April 8th should take other precautions to protect their computers. Don't connect your computer to the internet. Second, don't share files with other computers. And third, be cautious connecting thumb drives to an XP computer, as this could also bring viruses. John George says the XP computer at SGTV is as secure as it possibly could be because of antivirus software and being disconnected from the internet. But George also knows there's never a guarantee it should be secure. You know, I'll never say 100 percent. It doesn't matter if we have one does eight and the latest and greatest software protection. Anything can happen. Experts generally agree the safest bet for XP users would be to upgrade to a newer operating system. Lauren Laubach, Carolina News. If you're an XP user looking to upgrade, Microsoft is now offering discounts on their Windows 8 devices. Go to www.microsoft.com for more details. And it wasn't your typical fashion show yesterday evening at Davis Field. Sixteen dogs donned their adorable outfits and hit the runway. Tutus, renaissance, and blinged out collars were just some of the stylish items these dogs sported. USC's fashion board worked with the Humane Society to put on this event. Admission was free, but donations were accepted. Those dogs were really cute. I just can't see why you would want to put an outfit on a dog like that, but that's just me. <laughs> <laughs> well, Lauren Laubach is here. Um, it, Lauren Laubach is here with um, coming up on Carolina News. See how the farmer's market is about more than just selling fruit. Never look a howler monkey in the eye. Fried ants are delicious. With summer creeping closer, many students are trying to eat better and live healthier. The Healthy Carolina Farmer's Market was out on Green Street this morning to help students find healthy produce. But as Rex and Lane found out for one booth, the Farmer's Market is about more than just business. Mm. Oh God, that's good.
The fruits and greens are out on Green Street. <laughs> I'll say that. And for Mandy Churchwell, a trip to Columbia means one thing, a chance to meet new people. We met people from Russia, China, Iran, yeah, Switzerland, Germany, all over. Churchwell is the owner of the Veggie Patch and makes the trip from Orangeburg County to Columbia every time the farmer's market is in town. The Veggie Patch has been here at the USC Farmer's Market for six years. And Mandy says that while selling the produce is a job, it's the relationships with the students that make it fun. We've stayed with it this long because we've had so many repeat customers. We've seen freshmen go all the way through, you know, to senior. Senior James Armstrong says the students also feel the relationship. Yeah, I see the same faces, shake the same hands, eat the same fruit pretty much every week. It's really kind of created this bond with the farmer's market that I have in my heart. Mandy is eager to share her love of food. In you uh, see, there you go. Good. Even with students who barely speak English. These Japanese students visited last week. You can cook them with uh, sausage. And are back for new recipes. Because everyone speaks the language of food. Rickson Lane, Carolina News. Hey, Mr. Bell. The farmer's market will be on Green Street from 9.30 until 1.30 for the next three Tuesdays. And we wish this was an April Fool's joke, but there are some new changes in parking that may upset some of the students at the University of South Carolina. Students are no longer, longer able to park in the parking lot closest to the Coliseum. This is because a new housing development will take up the parking spaces park? near the Coliseum. Ralph Rawls, who works for Parking Services, says students have given him mixed reactions so far. So I, I think some of the students felt like it was coming that they were expecting this. Some of them had the look of disgust on their face. Some of them were like, okay, whatever. I even had one that was pretty excited about it. These new parking changes will begin on Saturday, April 5th. Students with valid parking permits may park for free in the Discovery Garage. Now we really are going to take a look outside with Lauren Laubeck for another look at the weather. I'm outside by the pool where it's a beautiful sunny day with temperatures in the low 80s. But how long is this going to last? I'll tell you coming up next. One of my biggest passions in life is animals. Welcome back. We have Lauren Law back here with us for the weather. Lauren, it was beautiful outside today. Yeah, can we expect that weather to stay here for long? That's right. It was gorgeous outside today. I got to spend some time out by the pool. And luckily, those, we those temperatures should be staying with us for a good bit of the week. But currently right now, it's 82 degrees in Columbia. Winds are 11 miles per hour with 13% humidity. So it is absolutely gorgeous outside. Perfect day to be spending as much time outside as possible. And it'll stay in the low 63. So it will stay very warm. Saturday, that'll all clear out. It will be the high of 79 degrees, 10% chance of rain. Sunday, the clouds will be rolling in, but still be staying warm for us with 72 degrees. So it looks like it's shaping up to be an absolutely gorgeous weekend. Great time to spend time outside if you can. Yeah, just that little bit of rain on Friday, but other than that, it's Other than beautiful. that, it's perfect. Well, coming up, find out why you may have to be on the lookout for Frisbees on campus. Some people might think that Adrian would never be able to go to college like Keep your eyes open for frisbees whizzing past your head if you walk behind the USC Horseshoe beginning on Thursday. The USC Ultimate Frisbee Club will be starting their annual Disc Golf Masters Tournament, and while they're not trying to hit you, accidents happen. Paul Kritzman takes us to the pre-tournament practice. Tree. Oh, nice. People never, never don't know if they're in the way or not. Oh, she's good. Obviously, you have to wait because you're playing mainly on where they're walking or at least throwing across it. When you play disc golf on USC's play campus. Down, down, down. Oh, wait, 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 wait. There you go. All right, now put it, now put it. Yeah, I know you didn't. You also play the waiting game, and you play a lot of it. But waiting isn't the only unique challenge. You also aren't hitting normal tees. Your goal includes pinging signs, hitting various trees or call boxes, and trying to avoid landing on brick hazards. Players admit that the rules don't always make sense. If you play with people that haven't played before, you have to, you have to explain it to them. And so sometimes when you say it, you're like, why is that a rule? That doesn't make any sense. But since players on the Ultimate Frisbee team created it years back, it's become somewhat of an underground tradition that's passed down orally. Disc golfer Matthew Wright says he likes the mystery with the course. It's funny, like, 
the looks we get from certain people on campus just because like they have no idea why we're just throwing discs around. And the discs they use don't help clue in bystanders. You just Originally I guess yeah. people wanted to work on their throws for ultimate oh. because it was wanted to play better but uh no i mean it's also it can be dry easier especially if you hit someone these discs right. are a lot lighter as as it's I'm not going to hurt anyone so what should you do if one happens to fall at your feet avoid it so it doesn't hit you and then don't touch it because if you touch it at all we have to play it where it lies so disc golfer andrell caldwell says to not be offended if you're yelled at to leave the leave disc it. alone leave this it. week during the masters he and the team just want to make sure you realize before it's yeah, too late did, um, and their score begins to drop <laughs> Paul Kritzman, Carolina News. The tournament wraps up Sunday with a green jacket presentation. The time of the final round will be made known to all players on Saturday evening. Now we have Matty Crow here with us, us with us for sports. Yeah, Matty, opening day was yesterday for the major leagues. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about what's going on in Major League Baseball? Yeah, well, Kara, baseball is back. Opening day was yesterday, and with opening day comes changes. This year is Major League Baseball's first year with instant replay. The new change, similar to the NFL's instant replay, will allow managers at least one challenge per game for a chance to overturn the call. In yesterday's season opener between the Braves and the Brewers, a call was overturned for the first time. At the bottom of the six, Ryan Braun of the Brewers was ruled safe on a single until Braves manager Freddy Gonzalez challenged the play. And it was reversed. It's only nine days until the Masters, but this year's event will be different than it has been in the past 20 years. Not only will the Eisenhower tree be missing, but so will Tiger Woods. Woods tweeted earlier today that he will be missing this year's event after having surgery yesterday for a pinched nerve. And it's finally here. Pro timing day is tomorrow, and it is bound to get interesting. Superstar Jadavion Clowney will have many eyes on him after his work ethic has been in question even after his outstanding showing at the NFL Combine. Connor Shaw, who is one of the most athletic quarterbacks in this year's draft, is hoping to impress people with his arm. Scouts are going to want to see his accuracy and decision-making skills. Cornerback Victor Hampton will need to show speed tomorrow because many teams are considering moving him to safety. Defensive tackle Kelsey Quarles, who has benefited from playing with Clowney, will need to prove that he has the strength and the speed to play in the NFL. And fan favorite Bruce Ellington will need to showcase his route running and catching ability to ensure his draft stock doesn't drop. Fans can enter the stadium at 10 a.m. and the event is scheduled to begin at 11 a.m. This warm weather is perfect for a ball game and we're in luck because the Gamecocks will be taking the diamond three times tonight. Women's softball is having a doubleheader tonight and will play Charleston Southern at 4.30 and Presbyterian at 7.00. And number two, men's Gamecock baseball will head to Carolina Stadium to take on Appalachian State at 7. And we have some breaking news here this afternoon. President Pastides and the athletic department have decided to get rid of the student section in williams Bryce Stadium because students don't stay the whole game. Students will now have to purchase tickets at face value. April Fools. The student section will still be here, at least for another season. Maddie, you had me completely worried there for a second. I was, I was glad I was a senior and I was going to have to leave anyway. Yeah, you, it's pretty believable. You can't get rid of the student section. That's just wrong. Yeah. <laughs> well, coming up on Carolina News, see what new ride is opening in Las Vegas Strip. It is important for young people to have a mentor in their life. The High Roller Ferris Wheel open Monday in Las Vegas, giving people a bird's eye view of the city. It's 550 feet high and is built as the world's tallest Ferris wheel. There are 28 gondolas on the high roller and each can hold up to 40 people. Riders pay $25 for the 35 minute ride during the day and $35 at night. Apparently they say if you reserve a gondola, um, a private gondola, then they can roll in a private bar for your party. Yeah, we should definitely start uh, preparing a trip out to Vegas sometime soon. I wanna go. Yeah, I think I'd need that private bar, those heights. <laughs> So Lauren, uh, can you give us one last look at our five-day forecast? Absolutely. It's going to be another beautiful day tomorrow, 83 degrees and sunny skies, 0% chance of rain. And again on Thursday, 84 degrees, partly cloudy skies, so two beautiful days in a row. Friday is when that chance of rain comes in, but it'll still be very warm, 82 degrees and only a 30% chance of rain. So we should, could very well see some sun on Friday, low of 63 degrees. 
And Saturday, all that possibility of rain will go away. It'll be 79 degrees, partly cloudy skies. And then Sunday, we will see some clouds roll in, um, but it'll still stay pretty warm, 72 degrees, 0% chance of rain. So overall, the whole week looks great. Great to be outside. The only chance of rain is on Friday. But other than that, definitely looks like it will be a great weekend. Very good. Well, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for being with us. See you tomorrow. Have a great evening.